Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another what I ate in a day, but we're only cooking and eating Korean food all day long. And of course, everything will be vegan as always. Most of the recipes are available already on my YouTube channel and blog, so I'll link all of the information down below. And for a few of the recipes, they are actually in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook, which will also be linked below. The Everyday Asian Recipes ebook and my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes ebook are actually right now part of the Plant Based Bundle, which is a collection of over 130 plant based ebooks for only $50. The link is below to purchase, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more later, but first, let's make some food. We're starting off by making some rice in a rice cooker. I'm actually mixing together some short grain white rice, which is what usually Koreans eat, along with some brown rice. I'm just gonna rinse it and let that cook in my rice cooker. While the rice cooker is cooking up my rice to perfection, I'm gonna make my favorite soup of all time, Korean seaweed soup, also known as miyokguk. It's actually really simple to make, and I recently did a recipe video on how to make it, so I'll link it down below. Miyokguk is a popular postpartum meal as there are tons of nutrients in the seaweed which is the main ingredient now i am not postpartum but i absolutely love this soup so much and if you are postpartum this is supposed to help you with breastfeeding something like this okay so because of this it's actually tradition to eat this on your birthday to celebrate and also give thanks to your mama for working so hard to give birth to you okay it is not an easy job so yeah we love to eat miyokuk on our birthday so you can also call this like korean birthday soup or seaweed soup Next dish I'm making is spicy braised tofu, one of my favorite ways of enjoying tofu. This recipe is so good that I've actually included it in both my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook and my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes ebook. These ebooks are available on my website, but as I mentioned, right now, they're also part of the plant-based bundle. And the bundle is a collection of over 130 ebooks and guides sold at a huge discount of only $50. For $50, you get over 130 ebooks filled with tons of vegan recipes, fitness tips, workouts, out guides going vegan tips and so so much more and again two of my ebooks are part of it and you have to check it out it's such a good deal it's also a great gift if you are looking for holiday gift ideas and the link is below to purchase along with more information and this deal actually expires november 27th so make sure you grab it fast because you only have a couple days before it is gone so this spicy braised tofu dish is called tubu jorim in korean and it's a great thing to make in advance and keep it in the fridge to eat with rice at any time Koreans love to have multiple side dishes with our meals, so we usually prepare and keep a few dishes like this in the fridge, and it just makes it easy to enjoy later. And on the side, of course, I gotta have some of my mom's vegan kimchi. This is so good, you guys. I have a recipe for this already, which I'll have it linked down below. But uh, this is basically spicy fermented cabbage. And there's actually multiple types of kimchi. There's, I think, over 100 different types of kimchi in Korea. But this is the most common type, which is the Napa cabbage kimchi. And a lot of people don't know this, but kimchi is actually not even vegetarian most of the time because there's some sort of shrimp paste or fish that's used in the process but this one is a vegan version which is just as delicious in my opinion and just like that breakfast is served and as you can see i have a few different varieties of things that i'm going to enjoy and this is kind of the korean way of eating you have a bowl of rice some kind of soup and maybe some side dishes all right breakfast is served yay mm -hmm. I mean, that was one delicious breakfast. Now let's make some lunch. So for one of my lunch dishes, I decided to make Korean vegetable pancakes, also known as yatejeon. This is not to be confused with the Western style of pancakes as this is completely savory and not sweet. It's actually really easy to make and you probably already have most of the ingredients in your fridge. The best part is that you can kind of add whatever veggies you wanna add. I'm doing onions, carrots, Korean zucchini and potatoes, but you can really pick and choose what you want. I'm chopping the veggies into really thin long pieces and then I added them into a mixing bowl and then I simply add in flour salt and water and just mix it really well the measurements can be found in my blog post which is linked down below 
And once that's nicely mixed, add a generous amount of oil onto a nonstick pan and let that heat up on medium heat. And then I add the mixture and I flatten it out as much as I can with my spatula. And make sure the heat isn't too high because you want it to cook through without burning the outside. And I like to cook it kind of at like a medium low heat for a good few minutes on each side until it gets like really nice and golden. I usually flip it around a few times just to make sure it's cooked really, really nicely. And meanwhile, I made myself a really easy dipping sauce for the pancakes, which is a mixture of soy sauce, vinegar, sesame seeds, and kuchukaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes. That part is optional. And I also have another spicy dipping sauce that I love, which is also listed in the blog post down below for the pancakes. And now for the second part of my lunch, I'm making a vegan version of Korean spicy sashimi mixed rice. In Korea, we call this hui deopbap. Um, obviously this one is the vegan version, yes. And this recipe can be found again in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook. And it's basically a mixture of lots of fresh veggies and a few things that replace the sashimi, okay? So we're not using any fish, but you won't miss the fish in this, okay? And then basically you have some rice, lots of uh, mixed veggies, and of course a very yummy spicy sauce. All you have to do is just mix this really well when you're ready to eat. And again, this recipe can be found in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook. Time for lunch! Yatsejan! I'm so excited! Let's mix this up. All right, time for dinner. We are starting by making vegan tteokbokki or spicy Korean rice cakes. This is one of my favorite dishes of all time. It is a delicious street food, very popular in Korea. And yes, I have a recipe for this already on my blog. So check that out for the measurements. First, I'm starting with mixing in some kelp powder with some water to create a kelp broth. And then I'm gonna add in some chopped onions, carrots, and cabbage. And we're gonna let this come to a boil. And in the meantime, I'm gonna mix up the sauce. Starting with some gochujang, which is Korean red pepper paste, soy sauce, minced garlic, agave nectar, or maple syrup, and some gochugaru. Again, that's Korean red pepper flakes. And mix that really well. Now, once the broth is boiling, you can add in the Korean rice cakes, also known as tteok. These are basically super chewy pieces of rice dough. It is so good. We're also gonna add in the sauce and mix this really well. And again, let's bring this to a boil. Now, my mom likes to add a little sake, so I'm doing that here, but that part is optional. And once this comes to a boil, you can turn the heat down to a medium low and let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes or so. The sauce should thicken up nicely. And I actually like to make this about an hour or so before I actually want to eat it because it really helps the sauce kind of infuse into the rice cakes even more. So yeah, that's what I usually do. And once I was ready to eat, I actually added in some ramen noodles. So that actually makes this dish raboki. It's actually a thing. So when you add ramen noodles into tteokbokki, in Korea we call this raboki. And of course, I had to make another dish to go with the tteokbokki and I decided to make kimbap. Kimbap is Korean seaweed rice rolls. Once again, this recipe is linked below. And I also have a recipe for this in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook as well. I'm starting by preparing some tofu. I'm just gonna cut the tofu into thin, long slices. And I like to add a little oil to a pan and I'm just gonna cook up the tofu until it is nicely golden. I'm gonna season the tofu with a really simple sauce. I'm just mixing together soy sauce, rice vinegar, and agave nectar. And once the tofu is cooked nicely and it's kind of nice and golden, I turn the heat down to a low. And then I'm gonna add in the sauce mixture and just make sure you mix that really well and toss this around for a couple of minutes until the sauce is nicely absorbed into the tofu. 
Another option, if you don't want to do this, is using something like veggie dogs that you can cut up into thin slices like this, or you could also use store-bought smoked tofu as well. Now we're gonna set the tofu aside, and on the same pan, let's add a little bit more oil, and we're gonna cook up some julienned carrots. I'm just gonna salt this and cook the carrots until they've softened. It should only take a few minutes because it's very thin. And at the end, I just turn the heat off and add in a small amount of roasted sesame oil, and then I set that aside. Next, I'm gonna prepare some sauteed kale. Normally, I use spinach for this. Well, normally spinach is used for kimbap, but I couldn't find spinach in the store, so I'm just gonna use kale instead, which is totally fine. I just saute the kale for a few minutes with a little salt until it's nicely wilted, and then again, turn the heat off and add in some roasted sesame oil and set that aside. And now let's prepare the rice. I'm gonna add some cooked sushi rice or short grain rice into a bowl, and I'm gonna season with some salt and roasted sesame oil and mix this really well. And now we are ready to roll. So on a piece of nori, we're gonna lay the rice flat as evenly as possible, leaving some space at the top. And then I'm gonna add the prepared ingredients along with some pickled radish. This is also called tanmuji in Korean, and I've also cut that up into thin, long slices. You don't need to add tanmuji, although I would highly recommend it, and most kimbap has tanmuji, so highly recommend. And we are just going to roll starting from the very bottom and then just going to fold it and make sure it's nicely sealed at the top. I like to add a little bit of water onto that um, seaweed portion just to make sure it's all sealed together. And that's basically it. This part is optional, but I like to add a little bit of extra roasted sesame oil all over the roll. And I'm gonna also sprinkle on some sesame seeds. And then that's it. You can just cut it into bite-sized pieces with a sharp knife. This tteokbokki and kimbap combo is actually a really popular combination. These dishes can often be found in inexpensive restaurants in Korea, and the best way to eat it is to dip the kimbap into the tteokbokki sauce. It's so good. This is a really winning combination. So we have here some tteokbokki, which is spicy Korean rice cakes, one of my favorite dishes of all time. And then we also have some kimbap, which is Korean seaweed rice rolls. And then on the side, we have some vegan kimchi. Both these recipes will be linked down below. All right, you guys, so that is basically it. Those were the Korean dishes I ate all day. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was really fun. Let me know what you thought of this video by leaving a comment and giving me a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the plant-based bundle once again, which is linked below. Again, my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook, which is filled with my favorite Asian and Korean vegan dishes, is part of the bundle, along with my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes ebook, which focuses on really easy, budget-friendly, and delicious dishes. Get all of that, plus around 130 more plant-based ebooks for only $50. There's ebooks from awesome creators like High Carb Hannah, Edgy Veg, Simnet Nutrition, The Vegan Zombie, and so much more. And you get so much value for only $50. Link is below to purchase. And again, there's only just a couple of days left to get it. So don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.